Hey guys, welcome to my channel Data Driven Decisions. In this channel, I talk more about the data science and machine learning kind of stuff. So this today's video is all about the arrays. So array is an integral part of any programming language, and Python and Julia also have the array data type. So what is the array data type? Array data type is basically containing. Uh, it is contains. Uh, some variable, some uh, like data. Data means it could be some numbers. It could be some numbers. It could be some strings. Okay, it could contain any kind of thing. So let's uh, we'll define how the array is uh, happening in Python and uh, in Python and list uh, in Julia all together. So first, just see that. In Python, I have already defined three lists basically. So over here, L1 is a list which contains only the integer values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and L2 is a, another list which only contains string values that is like A, B, C, D, E. So these are the string values. And just for your sake, like I have also include another like list or array. You can see it's a L3. L3 is basically one A to B3. So basically, it contains both. Like it contains both numerical variables like integers and also the uh, strings. So A and B, both of the strings. So list is kind of a data type or container which can contain everything. Like it can also contain float numbers. It can also contain uh, like uh, uh, like uh, other characters or many things you can put in the list or array. So it can handle that, and uh, and Python and Julia is very intelligent that you don't have to mention that what is the data type while uh, defining the list. So it will automatically take it, grant it for you. So now the first operation, first operation is going to be something like uh, adding two lists. So you can see there is a list L1 that is one, two, three four and five so this is a one list and another list is the a okay b c so this is the list so what the output i want over here i want the output something like like one two three four and five then automatically it will give you a b c so this is the output I want uh, from this. Like I just going to concatenate two lists over here. So for that, what do we need to do? For this, you can see. Uh, so I have already written. So first I run this particular cell. Okay. So I am first defining the three lists. So if I want to see individual list over here, so I'm just showing you them. Uh, okay. Just so it is going to be L1. Just see how the L1 looks like. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So this is the list. If I see the A2, what is this? Now A, B, C, D, E. Similarly, L3, if I give, it will be something like this. So now if I adding two lists together, like L4, I'm defining equals to L1 plus L2, then how it is going to work? So if I run this cell, you can see. So L1 contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and L2 contains A, B, C, D, E. So if I adding this together, so it will give you this elements like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and A, B, C, D, E. It's like containing all together in a list. So can we do the same thing in Julia also? In Julia, if you see that, let's see the Julia notebook. So in the Julia also, you can do similar kind of thing. But in Julia, everything is a vector. Like in Python, like L1, L2, L3 are the, uh, are the arrays basically. Okay, it contains different data types. But in Julia, L1 is a vector. It's a one dimensional vector. So you can see it is something like, okay. So it's a, it's basically a one, one D vector. 
okay this is another one d vector one dimension vector this is another vector one d vector so this is the kind of thing so if i just run this particular cell let's see how it is going to work so if i run it so you can see so yeah and if i see the latest vector so l3 if i run this one you can see the similar output yes it is showing the latest one so in this particular vector or add a it has one as a integer a is a characteristics okay two then b then three so it is similar sort of thing in python in python it was like one a two b three and but in julia it is uh, giving in this format in a vector format but in the python it was given as a list format not add a format so that's the basic difference but it can also do similar kind of thing so now if you want to do the same adding like the python to list what you have to do you have to do something like this and like in the third bracket l1 then this colon then l2 okay that is defined as the l4 so if I run this cell, you can see the L4, how it is looking. So L4 is like this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then A, B, C, D, E. It is giving the 10 elements in a one dimensional vector. It is coming something like this. Okay. So you may have a question like what is uh, showing as the SC Unicode, S A S C I I Unicode. So basically these are the unicode characteristics or codes of this particular letters like a so you can see u plus 0061 so this is a unicode characteristics unicode code basically so if you go more into deep into that you can just search over the google like what is the unicode asc code so you will have a much more better understanding but now we are going to focus more operations how to do different sort of things now the next part is going to be appending a element to a list so suppose in this particular element so okay so just show you this so so l1 l1 contains l1 equals to contain 1 2 3 okay 4 5 so this it has content so but i want to include 6 into this so how do i do that you can do easily that is this append method is there in l1 dot append if i do and if i add six over there so you could get something like this like one two three four five okay six so in this way you will get a appending method in in list format okay so now you can see in this list in this particular like um, cell i have already written the code so basically l1 dot append append is the method then you want to add the element you want to add at the end of the list so now if i add run this cell you can see now l1 become 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 because i have already append the 6 over there so now the l1 become this so let's do the same thing in Julia programming language. Okay, so in Julia programming language, how do you do the appending? You will do the similar sort of notations like earlier we were adding L1 and L2, these two arrays together or lists together, but now you have to add the one element to a list. So L1 is the element now. So if I see the L1, how it looks like in Julia, L1 is okay now if i run this okay it is content there are five elements so one two three four five okay now after adding after adding the element six how it will look like okay so if i run this cell you can see there are six elements are there now it has become one two three four five and six so there are six elements now in the l1 
uh, vector array in the Julia programming language. So in that way, you can add one element or two elements in a particular array or list in a Julia programming language. So this, uh, this is the one thing. And another thing is that how do you remove an element from a list in Python? And also you see the same thing in Julia, how it is happening. So there is a method called pop method. So you can see this. So basically this is the method. This. So this one is a basically the pop method. Pop. So what it does is that it, it uh, removes elements from a list or array okay it removes uh, from a list or array okay so similar kind of opposite of the append so in append what you do append you just add the things together but in a pop you just remove the things from a list or array so for this <clears throat> how we are going to do that so just see that in l2 how it is looks like we just see first okay so so just see uh, okay so if i see the l2 now l2 and if i run this <clears throat> so right now you can see that l2 contains a b c d e so the other five elements are there both all of them are string so let us basically a b c d e now if you remove if we just apply the pop method on top of it then how it will be happening just see if i run this cell okay now it is contained a b c d but e is not there so basically if you only apply pop method it removes the last element from the list okay so this is in that way it is happening so you can just remove that last element and another thing you can do like uh, using the pop method using the indexing so suppose uh, suppose uh, what should i do okay now a2 Okay, so A2 contains only now A, B, C, D. Okay, so the index of A is 0, index of B is 1, index of C is 2, and index of D is 3. Okay, so now if you want to in remove D basically or C, C basically from the list, so what you have to do, you have to use the index of C in the pop method. So you can see the l2.pop okay then you have to mention the index of the element so over the element is c and index of the c is 2 so you have just in like put 2 over there okay now if i run this cell let's see that okay if i run this particular cell first i uh, okay, first i um, so, uh, this cell. If I run this, now it is become A, B, and D. So then C is not there. So you can see that using the pop method, you can in, uh, include the index of the element. You can just easily remove those things from the Python list. So let's see how we are going to use the same thing in Julia programming language. So if I go to the Julia notebook, same thing I'm going to do over here. So here the notation is a little different basically. So over here, A2 is something like this, okay. So if I add a cell over there, okay. Okay, now if I do A2, okay. If I run this, the how A2 looks like now. A, B, C, D, E now, okay. Just to show you how it is happening. So A2 contains A, B, C, D, E now removing element from an array so we have to use this pop method in this format like pop exclamation mark then a2 okay now if i see how a2 looks like after removing this you can see that it has a b c and d but e is not there so e have removed from the uh, a2 list from there so that's the and one thing so same thing again i am going to remove particular element uh, from my index of the like list or array 
so here for this particular thing you have to have a different method so that's called the splice s p l i c e splice then you have to use mention the array that's a2 and you have to mention the index of the list that is two so like it has to be two or like in julia if you don't know in julia the indexing start from one like in python if i write here so in python indexing start like from zero one two three four so in this way indexing happening in python okay but in julia what happened is that indexing start something like this like one two three four five so in this way the julia like uh, indexing is happening so for that what you have to do if you want to remove like c from the list you have to use the index like this like a index is one b index is two c index is three and d index is four now so you have to mention three over there instead of two okay just if you want to remove this so if i use three now here okay and if i run this cell the same thing is happening like a b then c is not there then d so in this way you can do just do these things okay so that is for today if you uh, that is for today if you want to get more interested in this one kind of topic you can just follow my channel and you will have a much more better understanding of the julia and python programming thank you for watching my videos thanks